Hello. In this video, we will be talking about how to interpret analysis results using CC alpha and CC beta. So let's imagine we have already found CC alpha and CC beta values in the concentration scale. When we now have analyzed the sample and we receive a result that is above CC alpha, then we can state that we have detected the analyte. Because in this case, we can already say that very likely the signal that we receive is not caused by noise. However, when we receive a result below CC alpha, then it says to us that this analytical method really cannot distinguish the signal from noise. So we can't really say whether the analyte is present or not. Now to avoid uh, false negative results, we still have to say that the, the analyte concentration is below CC beta. We can state that the analyte concentration is most probably below CC beta because in that case we know that uh, there's very little chance that uh, the analysis result is by random uh, below CC alpha. Now, in conclusion, we can say from this that uh, CC alpha uh, is used only for making the decision whether the analyte is present or not. Uh, however, CC beta is rather used for characterizing the approach. So when the, analyze, analyze, uh, the, when the analyte is not detected and we state the CC beta value, then we are just characterizing the analytical method. Also, CC beta can be used for comparing different analytical methods and for comparing whether uh, this analytical method we are using is uh, good enough so we can use it to analyze samples that have set limits. Also, when we give the decision uh, whether we have detected the analyte or not, it is good to give the CC alpha and CC beta values. And if necessary, then the results, analysis results with the uncertainties should be also given. So hopefully this video has uh, explained a little bit better uh, how the interpretation of analysis results uh, are done using uh, decision limit and detection capability and uh, more generally how they can be used. Thank <laughs> you.